Now, Motown, they had a lot of very talented artists. But when it comes to Motown's best male group, who comes to mind? The Temptations? The Jackson 5? The Commodores? The Contours? How about the Four Tops? Today's story is about Motown's most outstanding group. Since you're here, go ahead and leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and push that notification bell to stay updated with all uploads. Now, without further ado, let's cue that intro. This story starts with the founding member of Levi Stubbs having a talented bloodline. Being the cousin of Jackie Wilson and also the brother of Joe Stubbs from the Contours. At this time, Levi, Joe, and Wilson, they will join a local group called the Falcons. Shortly after, Wilson and Levi, they will leave the group. Now Levi, he will attend Detroit Persian High School and here he will meet his friend Adul Duke Fakur. At a house party, Levi and Duke, they was met by Northern High School students Bernardo O.B. Benson and Lawrence Payton. The four would perform together at the party, which sounded great for four random people coming together on short notice. Who would have known that this was the start of an amazing friendship as well? After high school, the Corlec, they were officially joined together in 1954, and they would call themselves the Four Aims. From the years of 1954 to 1956, the group, they would perform at local clubs and talent shows to get the group's name out there. Lawrence Payton cousin, Raquel Davis, he took notice of the group hunger and he wanted to help. Davis was a songwriter who helped the group get a record deal with Chess Records in 1956. Now, when the group signed the Chess, they changed their names to the Four Tops to avoid any confusion with the Aim Brothers. The band, they will struggle for the next seven years. They will fail at Chess Records, among other record labels like Red Top Records, Riverside Records, and Columbia Records. Now, the group, they didn't dance, but they had an amazing sound. Besides that, they didn't have anything to really separate them from other groups during this time. After seven years of not producing any hits for the label, they began focusing on touring. This would help the group gain a polished stage presence as well. In 1963, Barry Gordy Jr., the owner of Motown, he would convince the Four Tops to join his marvelous roster. In the early years of Motown, the group, they recorded jazz standards for Motown Workshop Jazz Label. They would also provide background vocals for major Motown acts like the Supremes, among others. 1964 started off rocky for the group. They haven't recorded any song for the label, and they've also been signed to Motown for at least a year by this point. Motown's legendary producer team, Holland, Doja, and Holland, they had a song done, but they didn't have any direction for it. They would get the idea to redo the song so it could fit the four tops. They would remake the song for it to be suitable for the mainstream. And this song was released on July 10th, 1964, titled Baby I Need Your Lovin'. This song would reach the top 20, reaching number one on the Billboard Hot 100 charts and number four on the Canadian charts, also selling over one million copies, earning a gold certification. This was the first ever song released by the Four Tops since signing with Motown. The second song that was released by the group was titled Without the One You Love. Now this song will set the group back a little bit. It will peak at number 43 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts and number 17 on the US Cashbox R&B single charts. Now for the group's third single, they will work with William Mickey Stevenson for the song Ask the Loan. The song will reach number 24 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts and number nine on the Billboard R&B charts. 
On January 21st, 1965, the group debut self-entitled album was released. The group's second album was released on November 13th, 1965, titled Four Top Second Album. This album was reached number three on the Billboard Black Album Charts and number 20 on the Billboard 200 Charts. The album will also produce three hit singles, including I Can't Help Myself. This song will reach number one on the Billboard Hot 100 charts and number one on the Billboard R&B charts. The song was produced by the legendary team of Holland, Doja, and Holland. The second song, It's the Same Old Song, which peaked at number five on the Billboard Hot 100 charts, number two on the Billboard R&B charts, and number six on the US Cashbox Top 100 charts. Lastly, Something About You that peaked at number 19 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts and number 9 on the Billboard R&B charts. By June of 1965, the group that had a great run of hit singles. Along with the three singles I mentioned a few moments ago, the group also produced hits like Shake Me, Wake Me, which peaked at number 18 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts and number 5 on the Billboard R&B charts. And Love You is Sweeter Than Ever, that peaked at number 12 on the Billboard R&B charts and number 45 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. Now, the group lead singer Levi Stubbs, he had a voice that was something immaculate. His gospel preacher-like voice was a perfect blend for the rest of the group. His voice was so amazing. He single-handedly inspired Holland Doja and Holland to write and produce songs that would not only challenge his range, but also blend perfectly with the sound the group needed. In August of 1966, the group that would release the song Reach Out, I'll Be There. Now this song peaked at number one on the Billboard Hot 100 charts, number one on the Billboard R&B charts, and number one on the US Cash Box Top 100 charts. This song will also sell over 500,000 copies going certified gold. In July of 1967, the group's third album was released titled Reach Out. Now this was the group's biggest album. This album single-handedly produced six hits, along with Reach Out, I Be There. This song was followed by Standing in the Shadows of Love. This song had reached number two on the Billboard R&B charts, number six on the Billboard Hot 100 charts, and number six on the UK charts. Bernadette, that reached number four on the Billboard Hot 100 charts, number three on the Billboard R&B charts, and number eight on the UK charts. Several Rooms of Gloom that peaked at number 14 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts, number 10 on the Billboard R&B charts, and number 12 on the UK charts. Walk Away Renee that peaked at number 14 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts, number 15 on the Billboard R&B charts, and number three on the UK charts. If I Was a Carpenter that peaked at number 20 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts, and number seven on the UK charts, then lastly, I'm in a different world that peaked at number 51 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts, number 33 on the Billboard R&B charts, and number 27 on the UK charts. That was the last song that was produced by Holland Dozier and Holland, who will leave Motown after having disputes with Barry Gordy. Motown, they tried pairing the group up with other producers like Ivy Joe Hunter, Nicholas Ashford, and Valerie Simpson, Norman Whitfield, and Johnny Bristol, but Without the legendary producing team, the group's hits became less frequent. The first major hit from the group since Holland Doja and Holland had left Motown, it came from Frank Wilson, who would produce a 1970 hit, It's All in the Game, that peaked at number six on the Billboard R&B charts and number 24 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts, also peaking at number five on the UK charts. After this success, Frank Wilson, he will begin working with the group closely. He would echo Norman Whitfield's psychedelic soul sound for The Temptations. And this sound could really be heard on the 1974 album Still Waters Run Deep. This album would debut at number 21 on the Billboard Pop Album Charts, number 3 on the Billboard Top Soul Album Charts, and this album would also give us two hit singles with Still Water that peaked at number 11 on the Billboard Hot 100 Charts and number 4 on our Billboard R&B Charts. And it's All in the Game, which peaked at number 24 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts and number 6 on the Billboard R&B charts. This album also served as an inspiration for Marvin Gaye's album, What's Going On. Now, Obi, he had co-wrote the title song for Marvin Gaye's album. For more information about Marvin Gaye, go ahead and check out his video. 
1970, the Four Tops had partnered up with the Supremes, who had just replaced Diana Ross for a joint album titled The Magnificent Seven. Now, this album had peaked at number 116 on the Billboard 200 charts, number 15 on the Billboard Top R&B album charts, and number 72 on the Cashbox Top 100 charts. During the 70s, Motown, they began heading in a different direction. The older acts such as Martha and the Vandellas, the Marvelettes, and the Four Tops, to name a few, they was beginning to get pushed to the sidelines. The label, they began focusing on their younger acts like the Jackson 5, Rare Earth, and newly solo artist, Diana Ross. Gordy, he wanted to even move everything from Detroit to Los Angeles so he could break into movies and TV shows. In 1972, the move to LA was official. All Motown acts had to move west. Other acts like the Funk Brothers, Martha Reeves, and the Four Tops, to name a few, they refused to leave, which led to them being released. The group, they were signed with ABC Records, and here is where Lawrence Payton began doing more songwriting and producing for the group. The group's first single since leaving Motown was titled Keeper of the Castle. This song had peaked at number 10 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts, number 7 on the R&B charts, and number 7 on the U.S. Cash Box Top 100 charts. Now the group, that saw three more hits with Ain't No Woman Like The One I Got that peaked at number 4 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts, number 1 on the U.S. Cash Box Top 100 charts, and number 2 on the Billboard R&B charts. Are You Man Enough, which peaked at number 2 on the Billboard R&B charts, number 15 on the U.S. Cash Box Top 100 charts, and Sweet Understanding Love that peaked at number 33 on the Billboard R&B charts and number 30 on the U.S. Cash Box Top 100 charts. By 1976, hits from the group began to dry up. That same year, the group would leave ABC and sign with Casablanca Records in 1980. The group, they would see a small comeback in 1981 with the song When She Was My Girl, which peaked at number 11 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts, number 10 on the U.S. Cash Box Top 100 charts, number 3 on the U.K. charts, and number one on the Billboard R&B charts. The group, they will also see some success with two hit singles, Don't Walk Away and Back to School Again, which both made an appearance in the movie Greeks 2. In 1983, they will make their return to Motown, where the group was featured on a 1983 TV special, Motown 25, Yesterday, Today, Forever. In late 1983, the Four Tops and the Temptations, they will join each other on tour. The group, they released two more albums with Motown, titled Back Where I Belong in 1983 and Magic in 1985. Fun fact, did you know the Four Tops was supposed to be on the December 1988 flight that was bombed? The group that was on a Christmas tour in Europe, where they end up staying longer at a recording section and performing on a British TV show, Top of the Props, which caused the group to oversleep the night before and missed the flight. Mm. During the late 80s, the group they began focusing on touring. On June 20th, 1997, Lawrence Payton, he would pass away from liver cancer at the age of 59. Now after 44 years of the four tops, they never had to change their original lineup until then. The group, they would tour as a trio until 1998 where they would recruit former Temptation member Theo Peoples. On July 1st, 2005, Obi, he would pass away from lung cancer at the age of 69. Now, Obi, he was replaced by Lawrence Payton Jr. That same year, the group, they was inducted into the Michigan Rock and Roll Legend Hall of Fame. From 2000 through 2004, Levi Stubbs, he became ill with cancer. Roddy McNair, he would join the group. And Theo Peoples, he would become the group's new lead singer. On October 17, 2008, Levi Stubbs, he would pass away from cancer in his Detroit home at the age of 72. Theo Peoples would lead the group in 2010, and he was replaced by Arnold Barnhart. Barnhart, he would leave the group in 2018 and would be replaced by Alexander Morris. In 1990, the four times they was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, also being inducted into the Vocal Group Hall of Fame. In 2004, the group that was ranked number 79 out of the greatest artists of all time by Rolling Stone. Most of the four top history was destroyed during the 2008 
Universal Fire. 